far as we've studied economics for a long time, you've yeah. looked at what's happening in the UK more generally. Why is the Commission on Living Standards, which is reported uh, today, so important? So we are over-obsessed uh, as economists and economic journalists with what happens at the macro level, the big numbers on GDP and unemployment, uh, and maybe what happens on a micro level, what happens to a, to an individual person. What this report shows is it explains a number of mysteries in the UK economy, um, mysteries underpinning, for example, why it was that uh, Britain borrowed so much. Uh, it was because incomes were declining. Um, the level of detail here on household income, on average wages, and all these sorts of things, and the trends that have occurred over the past 10 years, is, is really revelatory, I would say, and very helpful in framing and answering questions that we have about why Britain has evolved in the way it has done over the past 10 to 15 years. Um, I, I particularly like, you know, when we look at what the social impact of economic policies, we tend to focus quite rigidly on inequality. Latterly, there's been a focus on social mobility. This laser focus, if you like, on median household incomes is really important. And to discover that they have declined since 2000, or flatlined since 2003 and declined afterwards, is so important to describe uh, a group of people, a group of people who are often described as middle class. This begins to show if you can describe them as middle class, that uh, actually the system is not necessarily working for them. And it raises serious questions about policy and policy of all the three main parties. And how do you think the report um, got a little over two years to the next general election? How do you see the findings of the Commission and the report shaping um, the political narrative for all three parties over the coming years? I think because economists tend to focus on really big numbers, GDP, growth, unemployment, those sorts of things. The dynamics of what's going on in a society are often missed. What, what this Commission report does is help explain some of the mysteries in the British economy. And it shows that even as GDP grew, we grew at uh, boom time levels, that, that the spoils of that weren't being delivered, even to the sort of average median earner. And that's really important. I mean, when you talk to some people, some of the wealthiest people in, in Britain, they, they deny that median incomes are even relevant to any debate. They say focus on the mean, which of course takes their very high income and averages it across the whole population. I think fundamentally if this report does anything is it refocuses attention on what really is Middle England or Middle Britain and how things haven't fared too well for nearly a decade and invites politicians, if they want to, to come up with answers. I think many people in that band won't have been aware that there's something structural going on in the economy. They may have felt that, oh, I feel a bit more out of pocket, uh, I'm suffering from gas prices or food prices going up, uh, I'm not getting pay rises in line with inflation going up. You know, this is a very common experience, I think what the report shows is that actually there, there is some rigour and some statistical basis behind this, and, and one that's sufficient to mean that yes, any politician uh, seeking the votes, I, I imagine a media in uh, Middle England, Middle Britain, would uh, ignore these sorts of issues and ignore these sorts of facts uh, at their peril. And you can already see this in the American presiden presidential election, where this figure of declining median household income is an issue quoted at presidential debates. And that will be the case, I predict, if we have prime ministerial debates in 2015. So all the political parties will want to look at, the, at potential solutions to this problem. Um, and I, I suspect they'll come up with very different answers. But the, uh, the analysis is, is key.